today we're looking at an item that I can purchase in bulk for 20 cents or less a piece. It's something that I will be able to sell anywhere from $20 up to $57.50. Hey, it's Don here. We're going to talk about something I just picked up, and it's something that I pick up quite regularly. If I wanted to get this type of item, I can get it almost any day of the week. No exaggeration. I can buy it in bulk. There are sources for this type of thing I'm going to show you all over the place in every city out there who has newspaper or any type of publishing company in general. Now, I buy massive amounts of photos. Now these are mostly 8x10 advertising stills or promotional publicity photos of movie stars, famous people, movies, and things like that. Now this is just a small section because of weight that I'm showing you. This is probably 25 pounds or so of photos. There's probably close to, geez, maybe 250. Now I buy these in lots of 1,000 quite often. Don't think that's strange. Don't think that's odd. You can even find lots like that on eBay, but they've probably been searched through. Best place to get these for us is pretty much always old newspapers, uh, magazine uh, production companies or publishing houses and things like that. Newspapers are usually the best. When any newspaper, even small town newspaper goes under, they've got file cabinets of photos because that's how they did photos back in the day or the, the photos you see in the newspapers. They were half toned from real images like this. They use them for magazines. On top of that, you can go to sales and auctions and run into these. My investment into these, into each one of these, is usually 20 cents or less. You know, I can show you probably 20,000 of these we have in house. Now, the next question I get when I talk about these with folks is, well, how many of those are you going to sell? That's a lot of work. There's a lot of images. Now, in general, I get 20 bucks or better for pretty much every one of these movie-related ones that we sell. Now, newer ones are a different story. These are all vintage. These are probably like 65 or before every one of them. Came from a defunct place. The businesses went under. All the stuff was sold at auction. It shows up locally. Sometimes people will pick through it, and then they'll re-auction off bunches of this stuff as well. So sometimes I get it when it's straight from the source. Sometimes I buy it when someone else has already went through it. Now, normally I wouldn't buy something when someone else has already went through it, but most of the people miss so many things when they go through these because they're very limited in the people they know in the actors, the actresses. And most people won't want to try and figure out. A lot of these won't have names or anything else identifying what the movie is. So if you don't have a good eye, a good memory, uh, you're not good on searching things down, it could take you years to go through a stack of a thousand or two of these to ID the movie and all of that sort of thing. Now obviously you can use Chrome to some extent on some of these, but a lot of them you're not going to be able to do that with. So again, I'm into movies. I worked at a movie theater for years of my life when I was a teenager. Greenwood Cinema was the name. It was a low-budget place, but they got movies in all the time. My boss was an exhibitioner. I used to go and watch uh, previews. He also was the one who bid on movies in town. Back in the 80s when I worked there, you would bid on a movie to see who bid the most to get the first run. So if you wanted to be the first one to show something in your city, you'd get to watch a preview of the movie. And then from there, you would bid on which one or how much you're going to pay for first run on those. And I was lucky enough to see tons and tons of movies as a teenager because of this. I love old movies and the whole works, and I'm really up on things like this, the old stuff. So for us, it's a huge investment. It's a really good money maker for us. Now, out of big lots like this, you're going to run into a bunch that aren't going to be worth selling on their own. It's just the luck of the draw. Basically, I'll be able to sell around 15 or 20 percent of these for top dollar, 34.50, 57.50. That's a pretty good high chunk of change. To get my money back when I'm buying a thousand of these at 20 cents or less a piece, I don't have to sell very many at all. And usually if I list a few hundred, I've got my money back the very first day I list any of them. I immediately sell some of the best ones. I pretty much always sort them by price range when I'm going to scan them to list them as well. 
So it's a quick, it's an easy list these days to get these up. You can use a duplex scanner and just drop them right in and boom, 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 boom. You could even set a stack of these on a scanner, depending on your scanner, and it will just pull them through one at a time. So it's easy, it's simple. You only need technically to scan the front and the back. And then for us, we would also upload a second version of the very first image, the front of the photo itself, and do a zoom in. So we'd have three images up on eBay, but you only have to take two scans. So it saves you a little bit of time doing it that way. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, you're not going to find this stuff. This is something I can very specifically target and do a little bit of footwork or research online or with a phone and track down big stacks of these in many cases. Now, I may have to drive an hour or so somewhere, but at the end of the day, I can walk away sometimes with 10, 20,000 photos at less than 20 cents a piece. Even if you're giving away some of the lesser value ones, usually you can get seven to 10 bucks for the really cheap ones. Now, I personally don't list anything that cheap. I'll bulk them up in a lot, say from a specific time frame or the same movie or sci-fi or horror or Western all together. If I can't sell them that way, I just dump them off in big bulk lots, just like I'm showing you here to a local live auction and they will re-auction them for me. Usually I make another chunk of change when I do that. By the time I am dumping these off at a local live auction, the ones that I don't wanna mess with because they're too cheap, I've already made a profit, so this is just adding to the profit. If you're smart, you dig into it, you do your homework, you do your research, you can make a ton of money for little to no investment. Now, to get them at this price, you do have to buy quantity. They're not going to let you pick through them. You're not going to be able to just pick the ones you want, and off you go. It doesn't work that way. I buy them in big bulk lots, and that's why I do it because of the cost. I always know that there's a factor of these that I won't be able to sell, or I should say I'm not interested in selling. I never try these days to sell anything less than $9.99. My time, my effort invested into these is worth a lot of money to me. So if I'm not able to list first a whole bunch of these in an hour, say 40 of these, which is extremely doable with these, and scan them in that same time frame, I'm not really gonna wanna do it. I have a threshold of listing $400 worth of items in an hour. I try to include the scan time in that hour as well. So in one hour, I would hope that we could scan the items and list them in that very same time frame. Now, there'll be some research invested in it, because I always hear people say, you don't talk about research. On postcards, I don't need much research. I can just write a price on it and boom, off you go. On most of the photos and things like that, I can just set a flat price for a whole bunch of them. I'll sort them ahead of time. So when someone's listing them, they'll list every one that I price at $57.50 all in a row. When I get to the $34.50, they'll list all of the $34.50 ones that I have all in a row. So they don't have to worry about prices or anything else like that. Basically, they're throwing a title up who's in it, such and such. This is from the era, 1960s, original uh, promotional photo, publicity still or something like that. And off they go. They're easy, they're quick to list. Now I've talked about this before, I try to only buy in bulk if I can. I try never to do one-offs. And I also specifically try to only do targeted sourcing. I don't randomly drive around to thrift stores or any place like that unless I just happen to be out and I'm doing it more for fun. If it's business, I am targeting everything. I go to one place, I pick up a whole mass of stuff, and then I leave. That's it. I already know what's there. That's how I can do this as well. Buying in bulk, obviously, is the best way. In bulk, I can make a larger percent of profit. I get them in one place. I cut down my time. It's usually similar style items, so I can list them all at once. I don't have to change category. I don't have to even change the description. I'm just doing a title. I'm just doing a price and then fixing the images, uploading the images. You'll notice that a large chunk of what I sell is that exact same thing. Everything can be just a couple of photos, a couple of changes of a tweak of a price. I can do a whole bunch of the exact same style of items all at once in the very same category. So the time to list these sorts of items is very, very small. It doesn't take you a long time. But as I said in the beginning, if you are new and you're not familiar with actors, actresses from say the 70s or before, this game probably will not be for you. You have to have a good eye for who's who from back in those days because that that's what sells these styles of photos. Now I can do this with military photos. I have hundreds if not thousands of military photos up right now, all 8x10 promotional items too. 
Those can be bought from businesses going under, such as military suppliers who don't exist anymore, collectors, military personnel in general. There's a lot of reasons why those things show up. 8x10 photos. Book publishers are another key area that you can find these types of things at also. And they routinely will have auctions or just sell directly out thousands of photos as they go to digital. Most of these were scanned. It's digital. It makes no sense to keep all the photos around. They can recoup costs. So they're going out the door right this minute as they upgrade to digital format for everything. And these are getting blown out all over the country right this minute. Now, I just pulled up a couple examples to give you some ideas on sold ones here. Now, this is Bob Barker. Now, obviously, this isn't the best image here. It's still sold for $25. This has been up for a little while. The game with these is as well that they are mostly going to be long tail items items for the majority of them. As I said, 15 or 20 percent will sell fairly quickly for a decent price right off the bat. So this case here, this one sat for a little while. I got 25 bucks out of it. Now this purchase here, I bought like 5,000 all at once and I got the price down to eight cents a photo. So we've paid for these the first or second day we listed any photos. I listed the very best ones first. So when other ones sit in my inventory, they're already paid for. I have zero into them at that point. So if I want to put some more up, it's only going to cost me the labor to list those. Just another one here. This is Anthony Hopkins, and this one did sell for $34.50. And as I just said as well, they will be long tail items for the most part. 15 or 20 percent of them won't be. You could always just sell the 15 or 20 percent that will give you the quick turnover get that money back out of them and then just re-auction the rest off now i like to list them all because it builds up my inventory and what's going to happen is you'll get a collector come in and he could buy 50 or 60 photos all at the same time it happens quite often now as i said as well i do this with military photos and all sorts of different other things as well if i can sell it it has a collectible field market to it I will give it a shot. If it succeeds, I will keep going with it. I've been selling military photos for at least 10 years, 8 by 10s The same thing goes for publicity, movie star, TV theme, movie-related 8 by 10s as well. I've been selling those for decades, successfully without issue. Again, long tail possibility on many of these. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. America's classic thrillers come to life. The Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew Mysteries. An adventure into suspense. There's gotta be a way out of here. <laughs> you used to go with her? Forget that. Oh, Professor, do you go sleep footprints? The adventures of America's favorite young detectives come to television. Follow that ghost. The Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew Mysteries.